Right, industry paper, and pay attention because there is almost very little about these papers in the proceeding. Listen carefully. The next paper, personalized benefit allocation without spending money, presented by Dmitry Goldenberg. I don't know, maybe online. Really cool title. What could be better than without spending money? So you see, I'm doing the segue between the talks. Thanks, Peter. Hi, everyone. Uh, can you hear me? I guess yes. Uh, so hi, my name is uh, Dima. I'm uh, from Booking.com in Tel Aviv. And uh, as Peter mentioned, I'm going to talk about uh, our work about personalizing benefits and more specifically how we do this without spending money. And uh, this is quite a cool topic to talk about in general and even specifically for me here at Lexis because I think it's also connects a lot with lots of my personal passions. So first of all, as you might know, I hope you know that uh, Booking.com is one of the biggest travel companies in the world. And that's something that also drives me uh, and to enjoy the work in day to day. But I think more than that, as uh, somebody who's machine learn who's working on machine learning in the company, work around data and personalization is really part of the uh, topic and the thing that I like to work. And finally, and that's also quite personal, uh, I'm talking about benefits and discounts and promotional allocation. This is something that's really close to myself. I really like to find the best deal. And as you might guess, I'm probably not the only one. Okay, I think in the e-commerce industry in general and specifically in the travel industry as well, best price, discounts, benefit, it's something that drives customers a lot. People decide a lot based on the price, compare them. And uh, things like Black Friday deals or any other deal actually make a lot of difference from a lot of for a lot of users. So I'll start with some personal experience I had and move it to the research that we did. So I really recently planned a trip to Disney World, uh, actually more closer to where you are right now. And uh, by doing that, I started with a regular journey, going uh, searching for accommodation, finding this nice uh, home to stay booked it for my whole family. It was a really nice experience. And then I got this pop-up. And this pop-up said, hey, Dima, you just booked an accommodation. It's really nice. Maybe you want to rent a car and get a 15% discount off. So since I was traveling with my family, and as you might guess, in the Disney World, there are quite big differences between place to place. The car was a perfect fit to me. So I booked it. Also, the, the price was really nice. And I really enjoyed this experience. But... I'm only one out of millions of users who are going through this experience daily on our website. And since we have a lot of different people, we want to understand how they react differently to this kind of uh, treatment, this kind of an offer of a promotion. So in order to learn it uh, correctly, what we do is usually run an A-B test where for one variant, we offer the same experience as before. For the other one, we offer our customers a 15% discount and measuring the result. In this case, we can say that the outcome of this was that we got 100 uh, cars booking more, which probably success in our case. But there's uh, quite a big trade-off in what we do because while we're offering the discounts, we do get more people to book and more specifically to book cars, which is also very strategic for us as a company who's mostly known for accommodations. Uh, but we also spend a lot of money by offering discounts because this is money that we could actually make by selling this for full price to our customers. So we need to find the right balance when we're doing that. And the, the right way to do this is to look what was the treatment did to each of the customer group. So consider that for the first group, uh, it wouldn't book without the discount. And now when we offer a 15% discount, we actually see that the group converted and it's really nice and actually a really good experience for them. Now, we have probably two other user groups that was, well, weren't affected at all by this uh, treatment. Those who wouldn't book without it and wouldn't book with the uh, uh, offer, and the other side, those who would book, with the, would book a car with the discount or without it. And those are probably also a group that we want to avoid offering discount because we're actually losing money on that. And the last group that might be a bit untrivial, but actually a group of people who would book a car without an offer, but now when we give 15% discounts, they suddenly start to compare prices, maybe go to a different platform, don't like the experience and suddenly run away from the website and don't book at all. So obviously what we want to do is first of all, to focus on this first group. And if we can target as many people from this group as possible, we can make the campaign really efficient. 
And to do that, we basically need to model this difference between these two scenarios, right? What's going to happen if we offer a discount? What are going to happen if we don't offer a discount? Or more specifically, to model the difference in these probabilities, uh, which is literature called conditional average treatment effect, CATE. I'm going to refer to this many times. And in order to get this uh, uh, number, what I need to do is usually it's technique that's called uplift modeling. It's a machine learning based technique that's uh, allowing us to estimate this scatter. And I'm also do some kind of promotion of uh, our own uplift machine learning package that we developed in-house at booking.com in order to estimate these uh, measures in a big data, in big data sets. So once we have this score, once we build an uplift model and I won't dive into how we did this right now, I'll show you some examples in there. Uh, we can take assign a score to each of the sessions, each of the users that uh, arrive to the website and basically sort them based on this score. Now, once we have this sorting, we suddenly have some really interesting uh, phenomena in the data that we see. So if for a random assignment, let's say we assign 100% of the customers get this discount, we would expect this increment of 100 uh, cars booking, right? We've seen it before. And if I treat half of the population, I probably would expect randomly and uh, with random assignment something like half of the impact so something like 50 incremental bookings but what i'm assuming is that this score can uh, solve the customers in a smart way and in this way i'm going to have a much bigger impact so in a sense first of all i'll get a population that i should treat and i get the, all the increment from them then i probably have a big chunk of population that wouldn't make difference getting this discount or not and finally, there's probably some population, usually it's a very small uh, segment of users, that actually the treatment make them uh, avoid and don't book, although they would book without the promotion. So now, in reality, I'm trying to build a model that's a bit more smooth and less uh, uh, segment, uh, doing less segmentation, and find this sweet spot. And the sweet spot that I'm trying to find is basically based on my budget constraint, right? When I'm running out of budget and I can't uh, find more, uh, can't uh, allow myself more promotions, I need to cut the budget and decide to uh, target on the top population. And what I'm actually trying to do here is to solve an abstract formulation of this problem because the cost of offering a discount to different customers could be different. And also the value, the increment in the sale I can do could be different. So in a sense, I have these two different objectives. And what I'm trying to do is to accommodate to basically to sell as many cars as possible while I have this budget concern, which is in NAPSEC formulation, exactly the size of my uh, bed. So in a sense, I need to pick which customers I should offer this discount and which customers not based on these two measures. And luckily with NAPSEC formulation, we have a very straightforward uh, approximation solution where I just can divide between the value and weight and sell the customers based on this. So once I have this kind of score, I basically can understand when I need to select a threshold and start this allocation. And the really nice part of that, that this cutoff is also allows me an online solution. So if I see that I'm going over the planned budget for the day, I can move it and basically allocate more based basically on the uh, economics that I have in, the, in this campaign. Cool, and maybe more interesting, by offering first the, uh, the promotion to the customers that get convinced to book with us, we're actually making more money by that and we can extend the budget. And while we extend the budget, we actually make much more budget to spend on this campaign and basically getting these free additional offers that we can give to other users and fund more discounts to everyone. And maybe one of the challenges that we have is that, and I'll dive a bit into novel techniques that we developed. One of them is on this paper that was presented on Rexis uh, two years ago, is a retrospective estimation. The problem that we have is that many of the traffic that we have in this random assignment is actually not a traffic that is very interesting for us. People who don't book, and those most of the customers that we have, uh, lots of bots traffic and other traffic that I might not find interesting to use. But with some tricks with uh, base uh, transition, what I can do is basically build the same model, but now only based on booking data. So. By following this equation, and you can dive more into the details, I can uh, translate the same uh, term that I'm looking for into the term of the probability that a reservation came from the treated population. And by doing that, I can avoid modeling a noisy data and focus on it on the interesting part. And moreover, and this is almost magically, uh, this solution also allows me to do this uh, balance between, uh, between the value that I get and the cost 
uh, within this formulation. So I just use the score that is trained on the convert, converted data. And by that, sorting the customers and using, using the score. Now, this problem becomes even bigger because I'm not only talking about an, uh, should I offer a promotion to a customer or not? I actually have different options to offer different promotions, right? So I can offer different amount of discounts, or maybe I can even offer a free taxi to one customer, and maybe a discount on a, a car to, uh, to a different customer. So now I have the multi-choice problem, right? I need to choose which, which offer to offer to which customer in order to still maximize the uh, sales and stay within the budget. Luckily, a NAPSAC problem also have this extension. So what we need to do now is to do multiple choice NAPSAC solution and to pick for each customer one specific promotion or no promotion at all to offer for them. Now, when we get to this, it's also need to think about how do we implement this online because customers arrive to our platform online. We not necessarily have this offline campaigns. This is something we also can tackle. But we need to find the sweet spot on the way when we're trying to balance in the campaign. So uh, an interesting solution to this, and this is actually something that we also plan to present this year, is trying to solve the, this multidimensional problem uh, with trying this efficient frontier. So we take all the possible promotions we can offer to a customer, to a specific customer, and uh, try to plot this on this two scale dimension, right? How much value do we get? How much it costs to us? And then we find this efficient frontier, right? Because not all the promotions uh, going to be efficient for us. And the interesting part, and this is some of the results that we've seen on real data set and on a simulated data set, that's when the offer space, all the promotion that I can offer can look like this, and there's lots of points to select from. When I'm trying to apply an optimization solution, an online optimization solution, I actually find that my function and my allocation learns this efficient trade-off between the weight, between the cost that we get, and the value that we offer to the customers and also to the company. Great. So in a sense, this kind of solution is a win-win for everyone. So think about it. The customers get much more value. They get more discounts. They get more within the same trip. But it's also not coming on account of something else, right? We increase the sales and the traffic that we have on our website. We earn much more and we're quite happy. And also the finance department is quite happy because we're not spending any new budget, right? We extended the budget by funding uh, the campaign within itself. And in this sense, we can operate in healthy ROIs and do long-term budget, uh, long-term campaigns, something that wouldn't work with limited marketing budget. So it's a win-win for everyone. If I go to this Disney uh, thing that I started before, I think everybody's happy. And uh, to continue with that, I also want you to be able to learn a bit more about this topic. So uh, besides reaching out to me or reaching out to other people from booking at the conference on site, you can also review these papers that focus specifically on the personalization solutions that we have uh, also around the promotion personalization and causal modeling, and obviously reach out to myself. So thank you very much. And uh, yeah, I'll try to take any questions, even if we have some. Uh, thank you, questions are coming. The most popular so far is how the uplift model handled uncertainty. I mean, confidence and interval of the prediction. Oh, that's a tricky question because, first of all, that's probably one of the biggest challenges that we have, especially since we're not using even only one uplift model, but actually uh, multiple models that we try to combine them together. So, as you've seen, we divide, for example, one of them into another. Uh, I I'll say that the first answer is that we do a lot of exploration. So, in order to train these kind of models, you need to have a lot of randomized data. And this is something that uh, costs us a lot, but uh, worth it to have more confident model. Uh, second part, also a lot of uh, hyperparameter tuning and a lot of uh, uh, fighting with overfitting and uncertainty, something that we learn on the way and didn't know in advance when we tried.